Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to build five-star apps with App Center Cross Reporting. Today, you're going to see how you can incorporate cross reports into your app so that you can iterate on and build higher quality apps. I'm Sarah Ford, and I'm a PM on the App Center team uh, that's working on cross reporting. And uh, this is a big moment for me because seven years ago, I got seriously hurt. And I used to do a ton of public speaking before. And this is my first time back on stage at a Microsoft conference since recovering. So, so thank you. I've been waiting for this for a very long time. Um, but back in the day, a lot of people knew me from my Visual Studio tips and tricks and from when I was a PM for Coplex, Microsoft's open source project hosting site from, from back in the day. And one of the things I did back then was write a book on Visual Studio, and one of the tips was about holding down the control key and making IntelliSense transparent on, uh, in Visual Studio. And I'm a big Doctor Who fan, and uh, I really like David Tennant, so I wrote, uh, best doctor, David Tennant, don't blink. And I uh, thought, you know what, it'd be really cool if I could ever get his signature. Last month, I did. And <laughs> And this is me <laughs> explaining to David Tennant, this Hollywood actor who uh, is a Shakespearean actor, has been in uh, Jessica Jones, Broad Church, and also one of the Harry Potter movies. Look, you're in a do well true loop, so you'll be the best doctor forever. <laughs> and he goes, You're so creative. And I'm like, I just floated to the land of unicorns, rainbows, and hello, kitty. <laughs> so never meet your heroes. Unless your hero is David Tennant, then totally meet David Tennant. And, and by the way, that, that tip about holding down the control key in IntelliSense to make it transparent still works today in Visual Studio on Windows. So to, so, to try it out. Sometimes I feel like I need to do a, 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 a Visual Studio tips and tricks reunion tour. So speaking of Visual Studio and Visual Studio services, so App Center. App Center is your one-stop shop for build, testing, distributing, and monitoring your apps. And this is a modular service, meaning that you can pick and choose between services. And uh, today, you're just going to see me use the, the crash service. And this is, uh, and the crash service is uh, also a free service. Now, this uh, App Center will scale to millions of users on demand. And just remember, the journey to a million users starts with a single install. Your moment of zen for the day, you're welcome. All right, you, you've seen enough to-do apps. You've seen enough hotel app, booking apps. You're going to see something unique today. You're going to see an app that allows you to report sightings of a time traveler. All right? So with that, here's a quick little app I wrote where you can book sightings of a, of a time traveler. Which one did you see? And we'll, uh, let's see, let's put a, a, a companion. Because I like K9. Yeah, yes, this is my artwork. Hold that thought, hold that thought. And I uh, booked a sighting of K9, but a good dog, K9. Affirmative. I just love that. All right. And you can look up a report of a sighting. Um, this is Seattle. I consider myself an abstract artist. <laughs> and uh, you got to stay true to the classics. So, all right. So what was the whole point of that? You're going to see how you can incorporate App Center to monitor this app. All right, let's do it. All right. So we're going to pretend we're getting started for the first time. Let's call this doctor. And let's use iOS. This is actually a Xamarin Forms app. And you can see how App Center allows you to target different platforms and frameworks. And the reason why this is important is for your getting started page. So depending upon your combination uh, your, for your app, you will get tailored instructions. And for here, since this is Xamarin Forms, You'll follow the instructions for installing a NuGet package and starting the SDK and using this line of code. And for this example, I'm going to copy this app secret. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm very meticulous just to make sure I copy the whole thing. All right. And we're going to introduce two crashes on that main page when you click the button. And this is to Sarah's iPad and Big Dollar and Whammy. All right. So let's say like you're actually for real, you're working on an app and you don't want to like write bad code. Like my coding skills are just like tanked since I took this job having to crash an app all the time. So we offer in our documentation, uh, you can find in the SDK for crashes that you can generate a test crash and it will only happen in debug releases. So it's okay if it goes out into a release, uh, an actual release build, it's not going to crash the app. And then let's see, the, okay, we've deployed. I'm going to click book sighting, bam, the app crashes, and I will restart the app because you need to restart the app to send the, the logs. All right, now the logs have been sent, and just FYI, we have a troubleshooting guide for whatever reason, you might, your app is not talking to App Center, maybe there's no internet connection on the mobile device. You can set a verbosity, verbosity, verbose, let's try that again. You can set the log level to verbose, there you go. All right, and with that, I have stalled enough, and we come over to diagnostics. There's the crash 33 seconds ago. Just as good as home cooked crawfish etouffee. And there you can see the crash, uh, the call stack, or the stack trace, to be technically correct. I believe that's the case. And then you can see this is Xamarin's form speak for. This crash, when you click the button to navigate to the next page. So why don't we do that? Why don't we go over here? And let's fix that. And so here's the on button book click method. And let's fix crash number one. And for those reading ahead, yes, we have a, a second crash. All right, so that is getting started. Now, if you've read the abstract for, for this, this talk, we're going to assume that Three months have gone by. And now your app has been in the wild. And uh, yeah, you're, so your app is in, uh, in the wild. And uh, you're starting to get one star re reviews. And it's like, hey, why isn't my, uh, uh, like, like, what's going on? Uh, like, people are like, oh, it doesn't work. And you're like that XKCD uh, cartoon. What did you see, Denver Coder 9? What did you see? So apps, I, I see nods. App Center can help with that. So for this registration, let's assume that you've been in the, in, in the wild for three months. And so let's, let's see what's going on here. So first graph is crash-free users per day. And this is the percentage of users that are happy. But this is the crashes per day. And so this tells you when the, when the good days were good or when the bad days were really bad for your users. And this number 30 is the total number of crashes for this time frame for these filters. And like I said, we're looking at in the future. So let's say you had a new release and you start getting one star reviews. So let's filter on that new release and see what's going on. And here at the bottom, there's a count for the first one is, oh yeah, we start by default uh, last crash for like development uh, purposes. But, that, but if you're in production, you want to see a uh, uh, count, which is, yeah, last crash is great when you're developing. You want to find out what was the most recent crash came in from QA. But in the production, you want to know what is the most impactful. Basically, you need to prioritize, what do I need to do? Like, give me that to-do list so that I can go make my users happy. And so that's why when you sort by count, that's what it's showing. And uh, the number is, for the first one, is 103 instances of this crash affected 89 users, whereas the next one only had 56 occurrences for 55 users. So clearly, this is a more important crash to look into. And here, we, you get more details. And a couple of notes to call out is the most affected device, which is helpful if you're on Android, or most affected operating systems. And like for my own personal apps that I have in the Apple Store, like they don't work on uh, iPhone 10 because I've never tried with iPhone 10. So I can imagine for my uh, uh, for this page for my personal apps, this line is probably all the way to the end, and I would have no clue like why I was getting like one star ratings if I didn't have this information. And then you can go to reports, 
and see in individual reports, threads, events, and attachments. And let's look at a different crash for this. For this one, I'm actually going to look at uh, one of my uh, crashes from today. I don't know if anyone can read that, but uh, I hope you can. I hear a laugh. All right. So uh, overview uh, about uh, threads. So this one only had one thread, but this would tell you what was happening, what else was happening on the device. Maybe it wasn't your code. Maybe it was a combination of things. Uh, there's a different one that has events. But you can, uh, you can send a screenshot or um, like in the debug release or the debug version, or uh, your your uh, if you have a log that you or if you have a log you are keeping in like a debug build or even a release build, you can send that at the time of the crash. And let me find that. Okay, once. So this would be a plain text log. To a file. Yeah. So the question was what type of log? Yeah, just like text. OK, so here's an event. And you might have seen in the code that I was logging analytics events uh, as I go along. So you can uh, have kind of like a series of breadcrumbs that you could follow to kind of figure out what was the user's path. Now, no one's going to sit here and just refresh, refresh, refresh to see uh, uh, crashes. You want to be notified, right? And then if you do, if you are the type that just hits refresh, please let me know. I would love to, I, I, seriously, I want to hear about your use cases. You should see some of the, the, the stuff that I do, because um, things just don't quite work the way I want them to. So we have to introduce that. We're going to introduce a second crash, but I need to make it talk to this guy first. So um, let's, let's start here. All right, so there are three ways we c you can uh, be notified when a new crash group comes in. So there's bug tracker. So with the bug tracker, you can um, so with the bug tracker you can use GitHub, VSTS, or uh, Jira. <laughs> uh, someone, someone in the audience <laughs> just said, uh, "What about Coflex?" Uh, my response is, uh, "Too soon, too soon." <laughs> And uh, uh, I think I'm the only person in the world that can say they started an open source project hosting site on one company and helped shut it down at the other. I brought, I brought it into this world. I was going to take it out. <laughs> All right. So we already have the bug tracker hooked up here. Um, a webhook. So I have a, uh, a Slack channel just for this app. And I have a uh, webhook here. And basically, a webhook allows you to send messages to a URL when something happens. And we're going to enable this. Whoops. Let's try that again. We're going to enable it was the, 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 red, the red glow. And then um, we're going to test it. And we see hello from your app. All right. So that is enabled, and we're good. So there is a third way, but uh, just hold on tight for one second. And now, oh, that's right. I thought I had. And just to double check, all right, so this, we are now going to send crash reports to the Find a Doctor uh, app. And that is to my iPad and along Z. All right. The third way is in the box, you can also get email notifications. And let's see if that has built. It's still building. Uh, let's bring up QuickTime. And what we're we doing. OK, build succeeded. And there we go. And Bada boom, bada bing. OK, that crashed. And we send the crash log. Let's minimize this. And now we see a notification that a crash, a crash group was detected. And then if we go over to the GitHub repo where I have issues, you see how it's, it's at 5, a refresh. It's now at 6. And this is that crash. And just to make sure, 32 seconds ago. 
So that is, yes, thank you, yes. Let, that's your appreciation for, you know, <laughs> crash reporting, you know, show. All right, and uh, yeah, so um, that is all the time I, I, I have for, for demos. Uh, just like David Tennant, I don't want to go. So you can come and see us at, uh, at the uh, App Center booth uh, for, for uh, any questions that you have. And I, I just want to uh, close on uh, one thing. The reason why I, uh, and give David, the king, hold, hang here with me for a second. Uh, I'm going to give David Tennant the last words. This will make sense in a second. But uh, the reason why I wanted to thank him so badly was 10 years ago, um, he gave this like incredible performance in his regeneration episode with Doctor Who, The End of Time. And he just gave this, this speech that just, like, just moved me to the core when he had to open up the door and trade places with Donna's dad, basically like ending his, uh, his character. And, uh, uh, and it was the first time in 20 years that I could point to someone, to someone and say, that is how it felt when I had to go home from the Naval Academy because I was too short for flight. And I cannot, I can't overstate how much it meant that I could connect with someone, someone else out there understood. And this is like 10 years ago. And I was like, I'm gonna thank him one day. I, I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna figure out a way. Maybe if I write, put him in the book, I will figure out a way to meet him and thank him. And I did. And I said, thank you for your performance of Doctor Who. It really helped me. And he said, and this is true. He said, I appreciate that and thank you for writing software so that we can have creative apps. So with that, all I can say is thank you for writing software so that we have apps to capture moments like these. So thank you. And, uh, yeah, and please, like I said, uh, this is my first time back. Please, please, please. Uh, Fill out an eval, uh, let me know how, what you thought of the talk. Uh, we take this feedback very seriously. And uh, again, uh, thank you for your, for your time and have a great build. Thank you.